Assalamu alaikum. I'm recording this quick message for people who have been learning about Islam for a while. Those who broke free from the cage of lies that was built around them by the Western media and the Islamophobes, and finally discovered the truth about God and the truth about this life. For the past couple of years, I've witnessed numerous reverts going through the same phases, facing the same difficulties and being confused about the same misconceptions. So I thought it would be a good idea to record this quick video that will guide them through those misconceptions and try to make their life a little bit easier. If you're about to be a revert yourself or you know someone who is, I am sure this video will be beneficial for you. So bring your coffee and let's start. If you're watching this video, I'm assuming you already went through the scripture and you saw hundreds of proofs and miracles in the Quran and Hadith that prove it's from God. I'm also assuming that you asked about all the lies of the Islamophobes and clarified all of them. Now you start with phase one. Phase one is where you realize that this is the truth and you have to do something about it, right? But there is a lot of problems that are holding you back. Like for example, what about my family? What about my friends? What about society? And what about the rulings? Like, I don't want to leave my boyfriend or girlfriend. I don't want to wear hijab, I don't want to stop drinking, I don't want to be associated with Muslims because they have a bad reputation and so on. Then after a while you enter phase 2, where you are planning to do your shahada or actually doing it, not knowing what it fully entails, not knowing the full meaning of the declaration of faith. And finally, phase 3, after you say your shahada, when you get overwhelmed by the rulings of the sharia law and all the obligations and prohibitions. During these three phases, there are four misconceptions that every revert wishes he had them clarified from the beginning. So let's go through them one by one. Misconception number one. Religion is a fact, it's not a choice. There are millions of things that you can choose, like what to have for dinner, or what to wear, or which movie to watch, who to follow on YouTube, who will be your friends, what will be your career, who you want to be the next president, and so on. But there are things that you can't choose, like for example, the day you were born, or who your father and mother are, how many sons do we have in the solar system, and who God is, and what is his religion. These are just facts. You don't choose facts. You either accept them or live in denial. And living in denial will not change the reality or the future. I say that because some people say I believe in God, but it's easier to be a Christian. There is no rules, I can drink, I can do this, I can do that. Remember when we talked about how Russia became Christian? When their emperor Vladimir chose Christianity over Islam and Judaism just because the Eastern Orthodox Church told him you can keep drinking after you become Christian? It was very funny, if you missed this video, I will leave a link to it in the description. Also check this video if you think that non-Muslims can have salvation. Anyway, don't delude yourself. Religion is not a choice, it's a fact. It's either correct or false. Let me give you an example, so it will be easier for us to understand what a fact is. In my country, summer is extremely hot. One hour in the sun is enough to boil your brain. What if I decide to live in denial and say, I don't believe in the sun? I believe that the sun doesn't exist. Will the sun actually disappear? What will happen to me if I get out of the house at noon? Will I find the sun or will I not find it? So my claim that I don't believe in the sun, it doesn't really matter. I'm just deluding myself. The reality will be the same. It will not be affected by my acceptance. The same applies to religion. This is God and this is his message, whether you accept it or not and his promises about paradise and hell are real and are going to happen whether you believe in it or not, whether you say your shahada or not. You're not changing reality. You just have a chance to say your shahada and start practicing today or surrender to the devil who is trying to make you postpone it as much as he can. And that leads us to misconception number two, which is the trick that the devil plays on every potential revert. The same scenario keeps happening again and again and again. A man or a woman already believes in God and his messenger, believes in the Quran, but does not want to take his shahada. When you ask him why not, he says, I'm not ready to change my lifestyle, 
I am not ready to leave my girlfriend. I'm not ready to stop drinking. I'm not ready to face my family or my society or my friends. And in case of a woman, she says, I don't want to wear hijab and so on. This trick from the devil is not that smart, but I don't know why it works on some people. So let's clarify it once and for all. When the Prophet Muhammad peace and blessing be upon him started preaching Islam to people, he asked them to worship one God. And after 16 years, he forbade them from drinking intoxicants. 16 years between believing in God and saying their shahada and between stopping their drinking habits. When you say your shahada, you're not promising to become a righteous person tomorrow. That will never happen. No matter how much you want it, it will never happen. When you say your shahada, you're just declaring that you believe this message is from God and that you intend to start reading it, learning from it and following it in the future. Changing your lifestyle, becoming better, stopping bad habits and addictions, making better ones, becoming righteous, all of this is impossible to do without faith. Faith is what gives you the energy to change. And you only get faith after believing, not before. For example, let's assume I am sick and there is a doctor's office in front of me. In order to become better, there are three steps that I have to follow. Step one is I should believe that this man is a doctor, i.e. testify I believe he is a doctor. Then I listen to what he has to say. Then number three, I do what he tells me. Then I will become better. But if I don't testify that he's a doctor, I will never listen to him. Therefore, I will never get guidance. Therefore, I will never become better. Satan is trying to convince you that you should become better first and then go to the doctor. That's just stupid. The correct path is to declare your belief in God, then listen to his message, then learn, try to follow it step by step, even if it takes years, and finally you will become better in the future. This is the only path. God said in Quran chapter 49 verse 14, قالت الأعراب آمنا قل لم تؤمنوا ولكن قولوا أسلمنا ولما يدخل الإيمان في قلوبكم Arabs said we are believers now. Tell them no you're not believers. You're just Muslims. Later faith will enter your hearts and you will become believers. This verse clearly shows that becoming a Muslim is just the beginning. It's the first step. You are just opening the door of your heart for faith to enter. And when faith enters your heart, it will change you. You don't have to change yourself. You just have to let faith in and faith will do the work. And some people ask, what if I become Muslim today, but I didn't have enough time to change? There was not enough time left in my life for faith to enter my heart and go step by step. What will happen to me? What if I take my Shahada today and die tomorrow? I tell them, just finish the verse. وَإِن تُطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَرَسُولُهُ لَا يَلِدْكُمْ مِنْ أَعْمَالِكُمْ شَيْئًا إِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ God says, don't worry. If you obey Allah and His Messenger, He will not discount anything from the reward of your deeds. Allah is truly or forgiving, most merciful. So if you just say your shahada and start your journey to become better, you have nothing to worry about. The Prophet peace and blessing be upon him said, إن هذا الدين متين فأوغلوا فيه برفق Religion is not easy. Go slowly, step by step. If you try to do everything in one day, you will fail. Think about your journey in the path of Allah the same way you think about your journey in gym. Do you think it is smart to try to lift 100 kilograms in the gym on your first day? Or is it more wise to start with 5 kilograms, then 10, and so on? And regarding facing society or telling your family, you can do it on your own terms. I know reverts who told their family on their first day as Muslims, and I also know reverts who have kept it a secret for years. Some of them haven't even told their family until now. So it's not a big deal. And that leads us to the next point. What is the declaration of faith? If Shahada is not a promise to become a completely new person tomorrow, then what is it? If you want really to understand what Shahada means, imagine you met the Prophet on the day he got his first revelation, first day of prophethood. He still has no rules, no do's, no don'ts. He just told you, I am a messenger from Allah to you. 
and I want you to believe in God and in the message that I will reveal to you in the future. If you accept him, you're a Muslim, that's it. And by the way, you don't have to do your shahada in a mosque, and you don't need help from a sheikh, you don't need help from anyone. God sees and hears everything. Just take a shower and talk to him directly and tell him, I believe in you, I believe that there is no God but you, and I believe in your messenger, that's it. In Arabic, it is Ashhadu anna la ilaha illallah wa anna muhammadan rasulullah. That's it. What about how to pray and how to fast and what about hijab and what about music? Is it halal or haram? And what about marriage and what about inheritance? And, 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 and. Later, remember, you met the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, on his first day. All of that is not revealed yet. Step by step. What if I'm not planning to change my lifestyle in the future? I don't even intend to change step by step. Not now, not ever. Should I say my shahada or not? Good question. And the answer is absolutely yes, without one atom's weight of hesitation. And let me tell you why. Remember that we established already that living in denial will not change the reality or the future. You denying hell will not make it cease to exist. It would be as stupid as me when I denied that the sun exists. And it didn't work, it didn't disappear, right? God said in Quran, chapter 4, verse 48, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْفِرُ أَنْ يُشْرَكَ بِهِ وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ Indeed, Allah does not forgive shirk, but forgives everything else. And I assume you already know what shirk means. So if you have an addiction or a sin that you're not planning to stop, God might punish you for it before you go to paradise or forgive you. Most likely forgive you, inshallah. But the only sin that is unforgivable is shirk. Its punishment is eternal hellfire. So let me rephrase your question the way I hear it. You are saying I have two problems in my life. The first problem is I lost one of my shirts. I'm looking for it. And the second problem is I have a deadly tumor. And the best surgeon in town told me that he would remove it in surgery for free. I want to tell this doctor that no, leave my tumor, don't do the surgery until I find my shirt first. Does that make sense? My advice is fix the tumor first before it's too late, before you suffer the consequences. Then let's talk about your missing shirt. Maybe you will find it, maybe not. Whatever your sin is, it will not send you to eternal hellfire. But not saying your shahada will. What should I do after I say my shahada? First, Mark this day as the best day of your life. Maybe you don't understand why now, but I promise you will. You might even celebrate this day every year instead of celebrating your birthday. Second, don't worry about rules and obligations now. Open your heart for faith to enter first. Open the Quran from the first page one more time. I know you read it before. Start again. But this time, read it with tafsir. Take your time, digest every chapter and Try to get the message behind every verse. This is God talking to you. And wait and see the miracle that will happen on your own self. You will not put any effort into changing yourself to the better. Quran will enter your heart and wash all the evil away from it. You will find yourself leaning towards new things and leaving back things from the past. It will happen with love and excitement. Just start and look at yourself in the mirror next year and tell me if you recognize yourself or not. If you need help with translation or explanation of the Quran, we do a lot of group reading sessions on Discord. Join us using the link below. And we will help you with reading every chapter and we will answer all of your questions. And if you're wondering what will happen to me if I die in the process while I still have sins, while I am still becoming better, Check out our video titled 38 ways Allah will forgive you. I will also leave a link to it below or it will appear on the screen right now if you're watching on YouTube. Also share this video with your friends. I am sure there are a lot of people who really need to see this. See you in the next video. Thanks and Salam Alaikum.